Hello, I wanted to share a kind of quick hack for more nuanced masks. Here's the problem. We got a tree here. We're trying to put some greenery behind it. Lots of moving parts. We got a mask here to work with, and this is pretty well dialed in, but you can see that it's very sharp, and the footage we're trying to mask is a little bit softer of an edge here, and it's also super bumpy. And I should add here that this technique works best when you've got some high contrast, like you can see the background is pretty bright and the tree is a little bit darker. I use this same technique in this scene where a monster appears, you can see it's super white outside, and the inside the barn is a little bit darker. And this technique really helps in that kind of situation where you've got that much contrast. And if you wanna see, here's the mask before this technique, and here is the mask with a little bit more nuance after this technique. You can see the edge is just a little bit less sharp and a little bit more accurate to the detail. So let's, let's see if we can just build this from the ground up. Okay, so let's start from our footage here. I'm going to go Shift A, add in a color ramp. Here's one of those. And basically what we wanna do is increase the contrast to the point where the background is really white and the foreground is really dark. So just dial that in. Okay, so you can see this is a pretty decent mask going on here. Um, the problem we have is that the whole scene isn't white. There's a lot of black stuff over here. There's a lot of white highlights in the tree where we want it to be black. So that's where we use the rougher mask that I created. Let's dial this in, do, 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 foreground tree, and take a look at it. Okay, so let's start by inverting this. I'm gonna go color and invert. We want to supplement the original footage with this mask. So we want to add this white part and we want to subtract this dark part, but we want to keep the nice fine edge in between. So what we're gonna do is add in a filter and use a dilate erode. And let's just see what happens if we bump this up to four. Quick audio note here, the dilate erode, I believe uses pixels as its value. So for 4K footage, you'd probably want a larger value than just four, which I'll discover in a second here. You can see it shrinks a little bit. So let's use this for the black part. And then I'm also gonna duplicate this and let's make it subtract by negative four and take a look at this. That just gets a little bit thicker. So now you can see we've got two versions of this mask and we can use those on either side of our contrast based mask just to tune it up a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go shift A. Let's add in a color, add in the bright values. So mix, I'm gonna put in the mask with the negative value and the erode and put it in our contrast based mask and switch this to be an add. Let's see what this gives us. Okay, nice. Um, I think we could probably go a little bit less. Let's see what happens if we turn this up to like eight or nine. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. You can see we've masked out a lot of the brighter parts and we've still got this nuanced edge here. Let's duplicate this add and change it to a multiply. I'm going to plug in our distance four into the bottom socket here and let's see what we get. Nice, so you can see all of the parts where it should be black are and then we've still got this pretty nice detailed edge. You can mess around with the distance of the dilate erode. I think maybe this is a little bit not enough. So let's train that up to eight or so. And you can see we get a little bit more nuance once again. And we can also mess around with this mask if we feel like the edge is still a little bit too sharp. We could just turn up the white part or turn it down, adjust things as needed. And you can see I've got the one that's actually dialed in down here, which looks pretty similar. I've also added a blur node to the end, which helps make things not as sharp. And you can see, let's just go to the end and do the before and after. So before we've got this really sharp edge. And then if I use our more nuanced mask, we get something like this. And you can still see there's a little bit of a line there, but it's not too bad. Now, like I mentioned, when you've got a lot of motion going on, something like a tracked in mask is pretty difficult to get just right. So if you actually use the footage as a mask, it ends up tracking a lot better. If you stuck around this long and you'd like to continue to get updates about tutorials, there's a link in the description that says free smoke elements, and this will get you a download of my smoke elements, which are looping and seamless videos that you can basically just drag and drop into your blender scenes to add a lot more life to them. And in addition to that, you'll get emails whenever I post a new tutorial. If you want to check out a little bit more of a detailed shot breakdown of this particular shot, there's a link right here, and I hope you have an excellent day. Cheers!